Hello again and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to share with you my process for creating painting panels. Now there are a variety of different pre-made painting panels on the market today and they cover a pretty broad price range. Uh, I picked this one up at a local Michaels and as you can see it's pretty flexible and it's already developed a little bit of a bow in it. I only use panels like this uh, for studies and things that I know I'm not going to be making uh, into a larger painting. Now the problem is the sturdier panels tend to be the more expensive ones and can really take a toll on your budget. I prefer to make my own panels because as most artists will tell you over the broader picture it's more cost efficient to do so. Now when it comes to making your own panels you've got several options out there. Some artists like to paint directly on primed panel. Others, like me, prefer the tooth of canvas combined with the rigid support of a panel. For me, cutting and preparing the panel is only half the process. Once a panel is prepared, I'll mount my canvas directly to that. Now, some artists prefer to paint on tempered masonite, or hardboard as it's often called. The problem with masonite, though, lies in its composition. Masonite's made from wood fibers and glue that are molded together into sheets. Now on its own, masonite's very sturdy, uh, but sometimes a little damage can cause masonite to crumble at the edges or at the corners. Masonite's very heavy, which isn't a problem if you're painting small, but for larger works it can be an issue. And lastly, larger pieces of masonite are more prone to warping, so you end up having to build a support for it anyway. Now sometimes I'll use 3 8 inch gator board. Gator board is nice because it's rigid, it's very lightweight, it's not prone to warping at larger sizes, and you don't need a table saw to cut it down. You can use a sharp utility blade. The drawback to gator board is that it's more prone to damage so that you have to be very careful with it. Gator board's also not pH neutral, so you have to make sure you coat it with several coats of gesso before you mount your canvas on it just like I've done with this one. Now, my preferred mount is plywood. Now, unlike masonite, which is made from wood fibers, plywood is made from sheets of wood that are glued and pressed together. And each layer is glued so that the grain runs at a 90 degree angle to that of the layer below it. That by itself makes plywood inherently sturdier. Now, I use Baltic birch plywood. It's easy to work with, it doesn't usually have the knots and rough edges that other types of wood can have, and it's also easier on the wallet than some types of wood. You can buy birch panels at your local lumber store and get them to cut them to size for you, or if you have a table saw or a circular saw, you can do it yourself. This is 3 16 birch plywood panel. Um, I've already put a coat of gesso on the front. For larger, larger pieces, uh, I'll oftentimes use 1 quarter inch or 3 eighths inch. Now once you get your panels cut to size, you have to gesso them. And there are two reasons for doing this. First, you want to keep moisture from getting into the wood and causing warping or other damage. Second, if you're painting in oils, the oils in the paint are slightly acidic and over time they can penetrate the wood and the support and cause the wood fibers to rot. That's true even if you're mounting canvas to the wood, as I do. But if you choose to paint directly on the canvas, you really have to have a barrier there to prevent the oils from seeping into the wood. Now when you apply your gesso, use a soft brush and long continuous strokes. Make sure you get the sides and the back as well. Your first coat of gesso will actually raise the wood fibers of the board, so once it's dry, you have to sand it lightly with a piece of 220 grit sandpaper. After that, wipe off the excess dust with a damp rag, apply a second coat of gesso, and sand it again. Now, once you've gotten your panel prepared, then it's time to attach the canvas. Now, I actually use linen rather than cotton canvas because it's stronger and it's more archival. But regardless, I still use the term canvas when I'm speaking. Now, I buy the single-sided primed canvas in rolls, and then I cut out what I need from the roll. Now you want to cut a piece of canvas that's a little bit larger than your panel. That's because you'll be using a liquid adhesive which will cause the canvas to shrink slightly as it dries. 
The last thing you want is to cut your canvas to size and then have it shrink smaller than your panel. The adhesive I use is Golden GAC 100 Acrylic Primer. It's archival and it creates yet another barrier between your support panel and your canvas. Now start by laying your piece of canvas face down and pour a little GAC 100 directly on the back. You'll then take a brush or a foam roller to spread it around and cover the area you need. Be generous. Make sure you get a good coverage, but don't put so much that it pulls up on your canvas. Then take your panel and do the same. Once those are both coated, you'll then take your panel and lay it face down on the canvas. Give it a little pressure and then use a damp rag to wipe around the edges to remove the initial excess GAC. This stuff is sticky when it dries, so you want to get rid of the excess. Now once that's done, turn your panel over. Take a small cylinder, say a bottle or a small mailing tube or whatever you can find, and roll out the canvas in different directions to force out any air bubbles or pools of medium. I use a rubber brayer, which you can find on Amazon. Now you need to let it dry overnight. Take a heavy book or books, if you need more than one, and set them on top. Fortunately, there are a lot of big books involved with World War I aviation history. This is a good one right here by my friend Dr. Lance Bronnenkamp. And aside from being a really great read, this is a great big book. I mean, look at that. You can knock something down with that book. Finally, after you've let your panel dry overnight, you can come back with a utility blade and trim away the excess canvas. Now the final step for me is staining the canvas. And the reason for this is to create a medium value on the canvas so that I don't have to gauge my values against a bright white. Now I usually use burnt sienna or yellow ochre to give it a nice warm feel. I use acrylic paint so that it dries quickly. And that's it. Your panel's now ready to paint on. Now, you might be wondering, do you always paint on panels? Well, usually, but not always. Sometimes I have larger commissions that need to be shipped overseas, and for those, I'll actually stretch a canvas over traditional stretcher bars, which I also make here at home by myself. Now, there are advantages to doing that, but I'll cover that process in a future video. For now, thanks for watching. Thank you.